I'm Gary from Piaget Products, Your Springs, Pennsylvania. We also have a store in Maryland called Olga Garden Supply. Check us out if you're in the area. Today we're hooking up a water chiller to our RDWC full plant system here. Um, hooking up the chiller is really easy. And I could do a quick video on that, but I want to talk about some other things. Because everybody comes in here and they're like, I gotta get a water chiller, I gotta get a water chiller. And you read it online and all that. And pretty much, it really depends on where you're at. Like you can read blogs from some guy in Arizona in his shed and it's 100 degrees. Yeah, you need a water chiller. But my question to a lot of my customers when they come in the door is, you know, what is your room temperature? Why is your water hot to begin with? Things like that. Like instead of buying that, why not buy an air conditioner first? Like, so I just want to start it out there because it's kind of like treating the symptoms of a problem instead of fixing the problem. So today we're going to be hooking it up to our fall ponic system here. Um, chillers work good on certain systems. Like if you have a drip system, and you're only like on some Yugo Rockwell blocks and you're only dripping a couple times a day and the water's not sitting there. So you might not need a chiller for that. Um, if you have like a barrel ebb and flow system and a barrel's in another room and now it's being cooled down by the room and the plants aren't sitting in the water all day, you might not need a chiller for that. In deep water culture, the plants are sitting in water all day. So those are the kind of systems where a water chiller can really come in handy. Um, the system that we designed here the fall panic system this is available on two plant four plant eight plant and even could probably custom do a 16 if i wanted to um these run pretty cool there's other systems where the buckets are in long lines and the cooled water hits the first bucket and it's nice and cool but by the time it gets the other end it could be warmed up so with this system it pumps in and evenly shoots the water in each chamber so it's evenly getting cooled which is awesome um the chiller itself comes in different sizes. There's a 10 horsepower, there's a quarter horsepower, half horsepower, and it goes up from there into industrial size stuff. And this system here, when it's full, this is the eight gallon version, four plant, full power system. This is about 35 gallons. Um, this is recommended for 40 gallons or more. I think it's up to 96 gallons. Um, but it's good to have a chiller that is a little oversized than what you need because the one 10 horsepower chiller it's just gonna run constantly the entire day. And it's just gonna work itself to death. Um, I'm gonna give a Hydrofarm a shout out here. This is uh, the Active Aqua water chiller by Hydrofarm. They've been doing this stuff since I was born, over 40 years. And they, they make some good chillers. What people don't know about chillers when they buy them is you have to get other stuff too. So. They don't come with water pump. You're going, to want to, you're going to need a water pump to go with it. And you're going to need some tubing and possibly some fittings. And this part, this one here is the quarter horsepower. So they recommend between 400 gallons per hour water pump and up to an 800 gallon per hour water pump. If you ran like a, a 100 gallons through here, it's going through the chiller so slow that it's going to be really cold water. And it's just not going to work as good. So we're going to be using what they recommend, which is their... 400 gallon per hour active aqua pump. It truly puts out about 370 gallons per hour. And we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the box. Comes with multiple fitting sizes. It comes with half inch or three quarter. Um, I'm gonna use three quarter because why not have the easiest flow possible, the faster flow. So we're gonna use those. Um, chillers, when you order them, hopefully they come double boxed if you order them online. Um, the ones that we ship out are double boxed. We, we ship them straight from Hydro Farm and we request them to double box them all the time. Um, instruction manual, nice to have. Um, this unit here in particular uses about 400 watts. A little, it's over 400 watts. So that, then again, I, I stress the point, like if your room is 80 degrees or 85 degrees, why not take care of air conditioning first before you even try to get a chiller? Um, This is the newer model. It's got the, the boost mode on it, so it'll really get going. Use the regular one 20 volt outlet, so you can just plug it in any standard wall. But it is going to add some amperage to your room, so keep that in mind too. Right. You're going to want to chill your reservoir. Some people have asked me if they can shoot the water 
straight out of here into the hydro system. You don't want to have freezing cold water hitting your plant roots. Um, now the range for temperatures in hydroponics is 65 degrees to 80. Some people want to run 65. If you're running 65 degrees, your roots are going to grow really slow. So there's a point where, you know, if you can keep it around 70, 72, 75, that's fine. The roots are going to grow fast and you're going to keep your bacteria problems from happening. And yeah. um, distance to the reservoir. Try to keep your chiller close to the reservoir. When you put on your the tubing, it's known to have condensation on it. So it's going to pick the humidity up in the room and stick it to the tubes and it's going to drip. So the closer the better on that. Um, it does run like a dehumidifier, so it does put out heat. Keep that in mind too. So it's perfect for this system because we have the reservoir outside the tent. So we're going to go over and grab a pump and some tubing so hey before I go grab all these parts I just want to give a quick shout out to Dave from Delaware and Don from Virginia Beach um, Dave drove all the way up here from Delaware and Don from Virginia Beach just to see me and they bought some cool stuff got them set on the way the right way and um, also can't forget Marie right down the street here she always comes by and keeps me in check with my gardens making sure I harvest my garlic and everything at the right time. So anyway, let's go grab some of this stuff here. All right, All right so we need a pump for sure. Um, this one calls for the 400 gallon per hour. This actually pulls about 370 gallons per hour. It's a Hydro Farm Active Aqua. And we're gonna need some tubing. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with the three quarter inch tubing here. Um, you can also, it comes with things for the half inch, but I'm not gonna try to restrict anything while I do that. You know, it's this pump will handle a three quarter or a half inch, so mine will go full, you know, as big as I can get on that. Um, you do have the option to drop this right into the reservoir and just pump out to your chiller. And that is what I see a lot of people on, you, on online doing, but pretty much your pump sitting in the reservoir, the fall pond system has the other pump that circulates it outside the reservoir just to help keep the water cool. So I'm going to go ahead and plumb this outside the reservoir also because pretty much it's going to heat the water up and then children's going to cool the water so it's going to fight each other the whole time. So to do that, I'm going to have to get some uh, drain fittings, these little drain bulkhead fittings. You've probably seen them in our other videos. We use these for a lot of different stuff in here. So you're going to need in, you're going to need out. And we're just going to plumb that right into the side of the reservoir and then we'll be good to go. The pump will be outside the reservoir. And that much less stuff heating stuff up so all right so i'm gonna go back over here all right um the chiller uh, it's got some weight to it <laughs> all right you got your caps and yeah like i said you could probably just run this right in that flap right there and pump right out of there but i'm gonna plumb this hard plumb it in I'll be good. All right. Um, for this, you're going to need a quarter inch hole saw to put this drain on here. And this is all part of a little kit we sell on our website, too. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we sell a little kit to hook up a chiller. You know, we all sell the chiller, too. But yeah, even if you get the chiller somewhere else, you know, the, it's nice to have the little hookup kit. It comes with your two three quarter inch fittings, 10 feet of three quarter inch tubing. And you'll be able to and, and the pump of course um usually i would take this off but i got everything hooked into here right now so i'm going to go ahead and drill these holes while it's sitting on here um pretty much no matter what you're trying to chill you should try to pump it in one side and suck it out the other that way the whole reservoirs kind of swirl and it kind of keeps it mixed up um instead of just having the chill holes like right next to each other so i'm gonna have it come in one end come out the other um, the cold part, I'm actually going to shoot into this side because that's where my pump is going back to the waterfall system. So um, you do want to keep in mind how high up to drill your hole so that your pump sits on the floor. So with this pump, this is the Active Aqua 400. Comes with some different fittings here. It comes set up to be submerged, so pretty much you're going to take the cover off unscrew your little inlet here and then we're going to hook in our 
three quarter inch gray piece. The gray one is the one that goes into the pump. There's actually a gray washer in here. So I'm gonna slide that in. Screw that in the front there. And then the part that's gonna pump up to the chiller comes in a half inch or a three quarter. So we're gonna use a three quarter inch to that too. So the maximum flow, that way nothing's gonna be restricted at all. All right, so then you wanna get a measurement from the floor up. So we're about one and a half inches up. That way the pump will be sitting on the floor when you go to build this. So I have a silver sharpie marker here and I'm gonna have to get down a little low for this since I don't feel like taking this whole thing apart to do this. Put a little dot there. And then our, where it comes back in at, it's not really gonna matter. It's where your pump's sitting at that's gonna matter. So it's gonna be coming in on that side. We'll just go for it to make them all even here. All right. So pretty much gonna suck out the back side of the reservoir and go back into the front side of the reservoir. That's gonna help keep things stirred up in here. And one and a quarter inch hole saw bit. There's a little ridge on the inside right here, so I went in between that on both ends, just in case you're hooking this into a fall apart system. All right, I'm gonna clean up my holes a little bit here. These are a little deburring tool. These things are great to have if you're like building stuff. You know, got them on our website. You can also use a razor blade to clean these holes up. We talked many times on videos about drilling holes. Seems like what I do for a living sometimes but <laughs> all right so these have double double washers here I'm gonna put one on the inside one on the outside snug it up nice um, in this particular system most of the water is inside the tent so because of the way this works where it exits the tent so there's not really that much water weight on here Some people choose to put hose clamps on these, but we're not. That's something you can do if you want. All right. So I'm gonna have to cut a little piece of tubing to go. It's actually gonna be on the back side here in between there. And that's gonna run to the, to the chiller. So I'm gonna get that all ready to go. So a little piece of tubing here. And you can do whatever you want with this. You can have it sit a couple feet away if you want, but it's better to keep the reservoir close i'm not gonna have mine like right against this so because because the chiller does put out some heat so right. if you put this tubing in hot water it'll really help it get on a lot easier but i'm gonna muscle it. i push in from the inside that way i'm not putting pressure on my buckets here Um, I want to make sure I clear this is a this is a water level top off kit that we put on here that way in case I'm away for a couple days I don't want this thing to like get down and start burning out my pumps because of no water in it so uh, we did a video on that too so down in below in the links check that out this one I'm gonna use the natural bend of the tubing which you'll see if you order any of my systems I mean it's almost impossible to get that out. Um, I have laid it on like the sidewalk, stretched it out in a hot day, and that kind of really helped things get it straightened out. But um, this is triple barbed. Shouldn't really have any problems there. We're eyeballing that up here. down here this is the out by the way so the cold water is going to be hitting in the area where the pump is to shoot over to the waterfall not a real big deal but it helps 
All right, awesome. Looks good. So when it's all said and done, that's it. And like I said, you could just drop this pump in here if you wanted, but then the pump's heating up the water more. So I'm gonna go get some water and fill this thing up and get this thing rolling. All right, um, we got our water filled up here for our chiller and for the plants. Um, fall ponics is bubbling away in there. Got our little waterfall coming in here, so plenty of aeration with this system. And I'm ready to hook up, turn on my pump here. Um, the way these chillers work is the pump will always be on 24 hours a day, and the chiller itself will. This will sense the temperature of the water and it'll turn the compressor on and off throughout the day. And that's how it just maintains your constant temperature. Um, I do plug everything into a ground fault interrupter circuit, which I've talked about in a lot of my other videos. This pretty much is, if there's something goes on with your electric, that circuit will pop the circuit breaker before you get shocked. So. That was all the air coming out of it, by the way. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug the chiller in. Um, in your in your manual here, you'll you'll see some pretty useful information here. Like this thing will not chill things down like instantly. It's gonna take a couple hours, or maybe even twelve hours. Well, there we have page one right here. Actually, this is there we go. The fourth page of this quarter horsepower the graph kind of shows you how many hours it's going to take for what temperature to bring it down to where you want it so it'll get the job done um so i'm going to turn that on i gotta give a shout out to hydro farm again um i've stuck with active aqua chillers for 10 years now and i've not had any come back they've been great they, they work great um maintaining these things i do recommend that you run either an enzyme product, like Sensodyme or Hydrozyme, Canazyme, there's a bunch of them out. Um, beneficial bacteria would also help keep things clean and keep your chiller running good. Um, SOS is real clean for hydro, very clean product. Um, both of these also produce enzymes, they're, they're bacterial based. Um, so my chiller right now is set at 75, it's saying the water's 80. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. Got a boost mode here. All right, and there it goes. It's turning on. So it sounds like a dehumidifier, like I said earlier. And if we sat here for an hour, I'm sure we'll probably get this system down pretty quick. Um, like I said before, you know, it's better to take care of your room first. Like, get if your room's running 85 degrees try to get it down get an air conditioner get something like that going um i've run systems at 80 degrees and actually did fine with it but i keep the aeration really kicking and get some beneficial, beneficial bacteria going in there but if you just can't get those numbers down in your water then you may need a chiller so if you like our videos try to follow us um youtube obviously and facebook instagram and I really thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll, I try to answer all of them as much as I can. Um, if, if you need to call us, try to email us first, info at pihydroponics.com. I'll be glad to write back to you all just on my own time. And thanks for watching. I'm Gary from Pihydroponics, York Springs, Pennsylvania. We've got a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply, and have a good one.